Did you ever struggled with designing your perfect Minecraft interior? Surely I did. Previously, I built this massive house, but when I started to search for ideas, I found so many. However, I ran into an obstacle that, unfortunately, many of those tips don't really work for me. It got me cornered, but then I realized I have my own approach to interior design, and some of my approaches are somehow different from what I've heard before. So today, I will share them with you. Some of them are quite unconventional, and maybe you will disagree. So let's just jump into it. By the way, stick until the end if you want to find out what I think the biggest mistake in interior design is. So tip number one, no doors allowed. Let me explain. Ever since I got an Elytra, I fly all the time. I constantly fly in and out of house. If you don't like doors, you can't be my friend. Sorry, Mambo. But I figured door is just an obstacle. You can create impressive redstone door, but it takes a lot of space and time to operate it. In my house, I have two arches from opposite sides, so I can always fly in and out of the house very easily. However, my house looked too open, so for one of the arches, I made this sort of trapdoor door that I can easily go out and in. It makes an illusion of protected house, but never stops me. I did it only for the back door, and I'll keep the front one open. But I've got another trick to make it seem like there was a door or a gate. It just opened. Oh, and if you are afraid of creepers, just make a gate all around your house and spawn proof the area. Easy for me to say I live on the island, but believe me, it's easier this way. Anyway, what's a house without a bed? So, my tip number two. You don't need bedroom. Yes, you heard me right. Bedroom is not essential for your Minecraft house. Besides, anything can be your bed. When you make separate bedroom in your house, you need to construct walls and doors. And doors are not allowed, you remember? And that obstacle will always prevent you from sleeping in your bedroom. I found that most of the times I sleep on the go. So instead of building bedroom with proper bed, I can do throne or altar and make it really accessible and close to the entrance. That way I will use it more often than if it was in separate bedroom. Which brings me to tip number three. Don't afraid to be tacky. I know many builders really despise using expensive blocks for decorations. Many people think it's distasteful. And you know what? I don't think so. If you like how it looks, just go for it. You want to show off your riches, but afraid to be show off? Well, don't. I think if it looks good for you personally, then it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. By the way, bonus tip. Try to incorporate your animals. They add so much life to otherwise quite lonely world. Speaking about being tacky, there are some blocks I want to use for decoration, but for that I need to go deeper. And deeper. Yep, that's about right. My previous netherite digging tunnel. Today I want to find some ancient debris and use it as decoration block. Plus I need one block of netherite for my throne. Hold on. How long has it been here? How did I miss it? How did I miss it? Did I just forget to mine it? Well, that makes my job easier. Anyway, activate chunk borders, go to Y15, dig straight ahead. Oh, it works already. Found some on the way even before explosions. Dig until lava ocean or big chunk of lava that you cannot block. Place TNT every 2-3 blocks. And when ready, use bow with flame or flint and steel. I even get my arrow back and I can see some debris already. Well, that was easy. I found 55 ancient debris. That's more than enough for a block of netherite and few extra pieces. Hey, apparently I never did a block of netherite. That's cool. Let me improve my throne. Yep, tacky. Tip number four. Open floor design. Well, you can guess what I mean. I don't like doors. I don't like walls either. But in order for the base to look good, it's nice to have some zone areas that are visually separated just like that, but still free to access. And there are a few tricks on making separate rooms without making separate rooms. So you can just make lines, both in the floor and in the ceiling. For example, you can make it from the light blocks. And now you can really see that the area stands out. And it does look like separate room, but I will never have problem with accessing it. And speaking about light, 
There is never enough light. Yes, yes, I hear you. Enemies don't spawn if the light level is one and above. This is quite dark and moody and easy to spawn proof your base. However, unless you really go for dark vibe, you want to have a lot of light in your house. It's a little bit weird to have dark corners and dark spots, so you need to be quite innovative to hide a lot of light sources in your base. I think it looks better already, but of course it needs a little bit more. By the way, don't this window seem a little bit breezy? Then here my tip number 6. Window is just a construct. Why do you need a real window if you can have another access to your base? Let me show you. If you place upside down stairs just like that, fill them up with water, first of all you will have water source in your base, but also if you plant sugar cane just like this, you will have really nice looking windows that are, in fact, can serve you as another door in and out of your base. Again, ever since I got an elytra, I always fly to all the different directions. And why entering from the door if I can enter from the window? And there are many ways you can make windows accessible, you'll see it later. But right now, get my another bonus tip. If you want to cover something up, make a half wall. You see, it's my old storage system there. It still holds some items, so I don't want to destroy it. Instead, I build this wall. And ancient debris looks really nice. But let's expand on the previous topic, multiple access. As you already saw, you can access this room with windows and few doors. And this rule applies to my whole base. Now, while building this room, I need to access my storage system all the time. And if you've seen some of my past videos before, you know that it's located in the basement. And this basement also has multiple access, with stairs underneath the base, and each level has lots of farms that can also be accessed in multiple ways. Mostly, I just float down. Also, I have this hidden waterfall entrance to access the room that I put the most effort in, the storage. Let's be honest majority of time that you spend at your base would be the time that you spend in your storage. So here I designed my farm area quite simple, but look at my storage. It looks so nice, it's really bright, and it really feels nice to be there. Also, it's very easy to access. I have these bubble elevators to go in and out very fast, so naturally I need to connect it to the main building as well. Apart from the bubble elevator, I will also build stairs. This corner I will dedicate to stairs. One will go down to the basement and another up. And for the bubble elevator, I left a small spot here, right next to my throne. And if I break the block here, yep. So anytime in the storage I need to go up, I can use this elevator. And every time I need to go down, I just drop down. It should be easy and universal and accessible. Moving on. I'm on the next floor with yet another tip. F is for functional furniture. Most of the furniture that we built in Minecraft houses is quite useless and mostly decorative. But I'm trying to be creative. I'm trying to add some function. For example, some of this decoration on the table is here to provide the light. What is happening here? Why is it raining in my house? I have few floors above and a roof. It's going to get moldy here. Anyway, when I'm building a new room, I always think about what is the function of this room. For example, I don't really have much for this one, but I was thinking to put couple of brewing stands and villagers, clerics. So I decided to build a dining room and put my clerics as barmen. So yeah, this chair, they don't have any function. But this table is hiding something small. First, let's illuminate it better, it's quite dark. So the middle of the table is made not with full block, but with slabs. It means I can waterlog it and then use it as a water source for whenever I need to brew some potions. By the way, let's add as much light as I can here. I made this wall to help emphasize the throne at the head of the table. And I managed to hide a lot of light here to make it really bright. By the way, apart from stairs, I can always access this room through this little balcony. And the villagers will go here. I think I will put couple of them only. I still need to design trading hall. So yeah, another tip. Don't ever let your villagers wander around. They will mess everything up, they will lose their job, they will take your bed, they will push your animals. So yeah, let me waterlock this table. Also, now I can use coral as decoration. Imagine it's some sort of salad. And let me put cake for myself. And some plate with fish. And what's the party without music? I actually really like to incorporate jukeboxes everywhere in my base. So I can play music if I feel like it. Anyway, it's time to move on. And I'm yet on another floor that I will transform into cozy library. Yep. 
This room also has a couple of functions. This one is also designed to trick the villagers into staying in their positions. I have few librarians with essential book trades, and it's nice to have them so accessible in my own house. Also, it makes library to feel more alive, so this place can hold quite few librarians to be honest, and they won't be in the same spot, but in different aisles, except for this one. Can you guess what will be here? Yep, it's my enchanting area. It's perfect place for it, and the barrel floor is quite useful. I can keep my books and lapis lazuli, and whatever tools I need to enchant. I will add grindstone later and anvil. Also, I cannot wait for 1.20 and all the new bookshelves that can actually store books. That's going to be so exciting, it will really help with this place. So another tip I have for you is break the symmetry. If you noticed, my bookshelves are not very symmetrical. They are all at different levels and this small study area has different table and small chairs are all over the place. It adds the feeling to this place, like it was actually used, it feels more alive. And yet another example of the window that wouldn't stop me from going in and out to another floor. And for this place I have very different approach. This is my cartography room. And tip I got from building this room is simple is better. Here I don't have many decorations, I don't really have carpets. I've got area for cartographer, but otherwise it's just a couple of solid tables and walls ready to get the maps. Also I used light blocks behind the maps. It will make them bright. So I have two big walls with maps. I will place one zoomed in and one zoomed out maps of my place. And tables can serve to hold some maps of my project that are currently running somewhere else. I have quite few. By the way, something I didn't do in any of the rooms is to add green. One of the best decorations that you can use for your interior design is all the natural elements. Like all this furniture feels kind of not alive and bleak. So adding some greenery is very important. Dark oak tree looks like a bonsai. And rod can be used for the lamp made out of leaves. Also provides so much light. By the way, I changed my floor design with amethyst. And this boring wall of ancient debris now can hold some pots and candles. Adding greenery adds so much to the base. Right now I'm mostly using azalea leaves, because technically my house is located in desert biome. You can use any leaves you want. I can't wait for the new cherry leaves. And of course when adding a greenery, here is my another tip for you. It doesn't need to make sense. Have you ever seen a house overrun by leaves that much? I mean, not abandoned house. It doesn't make sense, but it kind of works. So adding even too much greenery in some corners, like in my example here, makes place so, so cozy. Also, if you think logically, why would there be so much leaves? And same goes for the library. I'll squeeze as much greenery as I can. Now this study area looks really, really cute. And the view is just amazing. Can you feel the fresh breeze? I didn't go as crazy with my map room, but adding just few plants really changed the place for better, of course. Also, this place I will use to trap yet another villager adds a little bit more life. Axolotl didn't like it there, so I will put some fish. And last floor and last tip for today. Don't finish. Yep, I know whenever you're building a house, you may be so eager to fill up every single room as fast as possible. But think about it, if it's your survival base, you travel, you explore. Minecraft game evolves and when you find new things from your travels, you need space to expand. Yes, you can always build another building, but sometimes you just need a small space and building new house, you don't always have the time. Also bear in mind that if it's your house, you can be always renovating, always changing, always tweaking. And it's fine if your base is not really finished like for example that wall I'll open you a secret it's empty sir but I know for sure when I get some new idea I'll have a tiny bit of space especially now that we are approaching 1.20 update I want to dedicate that one top floor to all the new items that I will find so it's really important to have a space to grow space to adapt and don't ever afraid to change something most often it's for the better Thank you so much for watching. Which of these tips did you find useful? Is there anything you really disagree with? Are there any tips you want to give me? Feel free to comment. Also, like and subscribe. Thank you so, so much for watching. Bye!